the BPD does a lot of things, right? They're, they're the planning agency for the city. They oversee pretty much every major project in one way. One Correct. Way, Anything one over 20,000 square feet, we more. would we would permit. So how many projects do you are you currently in the process of going through the permitting? If you look at the past uh, year, the year before that, and the year before that, it, it tends to hover in the same vicinity. We, at any given time, would have about 80 projects being reviewed. The Boston Planning and Development Agency vets them in the community, vets them internally for sound planning and principles. And how, how long does it usually take to get through the vetting process? Well, frankly, if you talk to some people in the neighborhoods and some people in the development community, they think it's interminable, that it goes on forever. And there are certainly some very complicated development issues that take a long time. So maybe well over a year, maybe over two years, depending on how complicated the circumstances are. Delays are also inevitable if you're going to have a lengthy period of neighborhood con consultation, right? You can't, you can't possibly do something as quickly as you could do in 1959 because you have to talk. Absolutely. To There's no rush to judgment. Uh, our attitude is we want community buy-in. We want electeds to be supportive of the, the projects. We want uh, neighborhood organizations to be supportive, and we want uh, just plain rank and file residents who might not be elected to anything and might not be particularly active in an organization. They have voices too, whether you've been here for a long time or you're a fairly uh, recent arrival. We want to give people ample opportunity to weigh in on planning and structures that will affect their day-to-day -day life. What's your definition of not in my backyardism or nimbyism? I think it's more than just literally, hey, I don't want anything significant going on around me. I think it, it, it's actually more pervasive than that. NIMBYism is about more than just the building or the thing that's being proposed. It's a resistance to the notion that big things are going to happen without my, as a resident, an immediately affected resident having a voice. So I think. I, I cut NIMBYism a lot of slack because it's not just about saying no to everything. It's about saying no to a process that doesn't give a, a neighbor or a resident a legitimate a voice in, 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 in the development and planning decisions that are going on around them. When you have publicly owned uh, land, are you typically then selling it to the developer or is it a long-term lease? It's a variety of outcomes. Uh, sometimes we sell it. Uh, if it, if, if it the, the smaller the parcel is, the more likely it is to be sold. Very often, if we sell it, we may sell it for a fairly discounted price in exchange for deed restrictions on any residential units that are built there. And in fact, some of the parcels, you continue to own the land, right? And we're on one of them right, right now, the the, uh, which is why we're in this beer hall of all, of all crazy places. Right? in yeah. the morning. The, the Harpoon Brewery is a tremendous success story of, of this agency. The Boston Planning and Development Agency does, really, I, I'd argue, four core things. We do the city's planning. We regulate major real estate development. We run, operate, manage, and own some significant real estate assets, one of them being this area that we're sitting in now. Um, the Harpoon Brewery is located in what we used to call the Boston Marine Industrial Park. The Boston Planning and Development Agency owns it. We took it from the Department of Defense in the 70s, and, and, and we have uh, attracted and nurtured marine and industrial businesses in this place. Keeping to the, keeping to the traditional character, keeping, keeping Boston open to the sea. Correct, and that's really important to us going forward, but we also want to make sure there's an accommodation for the industries of the 21st century. I mean, right across the street, there's a cyclotron. Who heard of such a thing? A cyclotron, it, it apparently is a device that creates and experiments with nuclear medicine, but it's a Dana-Farber facility right across the street. So that's the kind of, of manufacturing and research and development that we want to see. so Boston, right? A cyclotron next to a brewery. Absolutely. <laughs> it's all true, and it's a beautiful thing. And, and, and there's so much life and activity here that we think from a planning standpoint it's a beautiful thing, but we also happen to be the landlord, so we think it's a great thing that people are coming to our property and people want to invest in this property. And the final thing we do, the agency administers $24 million in workforce grant funds. So when we talk about the people of Boston who might feel and maybe even actually are being left behind by this building boom, we have an important tool that we can use, not just through our regulation of development and housing, 
but we have $24 million a year, roughly, that we deploy for workforce training, helping the people of Boston develop the skills so that they can compete in this very hot economy. Because again, it's not just about housing, it's about the nature of jobs that they can access. So we're training them for the future, and that's an important part of our story that we haven't told that much of, and we're gonna speak about a lot more going forward.